Very good morning once again and thank you so much for staying with us here on CNN News 18. I'm Chaitanya Narula with all the top stories. As the legal push to extradite economic offenders back to India continues, CNN News 18's Arun Nair has accessed an exclusive photo of Mehul Choksi in Antigua where he is staying as a citizen. This particular photo is showing Mehul Choksi shopping at the Epicurean supermarket on Tuesday the 6th of November. This is coming in as the referendum to replace the Privy Council of Antigua with the Caribbean Court of Justice as Antigua's final ap appellate court was defeated. Reports suggest that the Privy Council, which is based in London, is in favour of extraditing Mehul Choksi, while the Antiguan government maintains that there is a long legal road ahead. CNN News 18, Zaka Jacob spoke to Giselle Aitzak, the chairman of the United Progressive Party, which sits in the opposition in Antigua. She has accused the Antiguan government of corruption and protecting Mehul Choksi. Here it. We were given to understand that uh, the chief prosecutor will be making a case in, in the courts there in Antigua uh, as to why Mehul Choksi needs to be extradited. Have you heard anything from, from the Chief Prosecutor's Office? Not one word. His name has not been heard officially. He has not been in any releases or statements from the Cabinet. I would say since probably August. He seems to have just become an Antiguan and taken up life as any other citizen here. Here is a most wanted economic fugitive here in India, has quietly become an Antiguan citizen, and the Antiguan government, which had promised to look into this matter and get the chief prosecutor to put up a case against him, why is it that they've suddenly all gone quiet? Well, the difference between us is that you believed the Antiguan government. We did not. This is the Antiguan government's MO, or I should say, this is the Gaston Brown administration's MO. It has become almost normal with this administration. Do you think that Mehul Choksi will ever be extradited? I think if India uh, puts the right pressure on, that they might have to do something. But I think it will, be, it will take a very aggressive campaign by India. Zaka Jacob, Output Editor, is now joining us on the phone line. Good morning, Zaka. Zaka, it's very clear that Mehul Choksi is going about his business as usual from the picture which has been sourced by Arun Nair. There's been no movement whatsoever in the extradition case. Uh, that's right. This is Mehul Choksi uh, shopping at the Epicurean supermarket in uh, Antigua and Barbuda. This picture was taken by uh, a, a photojournalist. Uh, it's been sourced by one of our colleagues, Arun Nair. Uh, this was on the 6th of November in the morning. Uh, Mehul Choksi is seen, as you said, uh, you know, just going about his daily business. He's buying his groceries. And as you heard, Giselle Isaac, who's the main opposition leader in Antigua, uh, saying that Mehul Choksi has now become a citizen. He's quietly going about his business. Uh, it's like, you know, there's, there's nothing against him, and the Antiguan government doesn't want to be seen as, as pushing his uh, case. Uh, the fact of the matter is, back in August was when we last heard from the Gaston Brown administration. The chief prosecutor, as well as the attorney general's office, was supposed to put up a case uh, against Mehul Choksi in a court of law in Antigua. They have so far, we're in the second week of November, they have so far not put up a case against Mehul Choksi. That uh, seems a bit suspicious because they had uh, pro uh, promised to extend all cooperation to the Indian authorities. The Indian ambassador in the region had gone there uh, on multiple occasions to impress on the Antiguan government why uh, extraditing Mehul Choksi was so important for India because he's a, an economic fugitive wanted for um, corruption, wanted for swindling uh, hundreds, tens of hundreds of crores of, uh, from, from public sector banks, mainly PNB. Right. Uh, the, the Antiguan government, by the way, just last week, had lost uh, a, an appeal before the Privy Council, which is higher than the Supreme Court of, uh, of, of Antigua. And ultimately, uh, if and when the extradition um, plea is moved before courts, then uh, uh, Mehul Choksi is expected to uh, argue his case and argue the case against his extradition all the way to the Privy Council. So as a, as a uh, matter uh, in preparation for that extradition uh, uh, plea that all the Antiguan government moves on, uh, last week they lost a case uh, at, at the Privy Council. So it, it isn't looking like uh, Mehul Choksi uh, is going to be sent back to India anytime soon. All right, Zaka. So you're saying that it's not likely that he's going to be extradited to India, but what is the sense that you're picking up from the Ministry of External Affairs in terms of their efforts to bring back Choksi to India? 
So after the uh, Interpol red corner notice was issued against uh, Choksi back in uh, August, uh, there was a fair amount of pressure. Uh, the ambassador in the region had gone there at least on a couple of occasions in the month of August itself. He had met with the foreign minister. He had met with the prime minister of Antigua. Uh, and we were given to understand, and we've got recorded interviews uh, from August, of, uh, of all of these senior uh, government functionaries, mm. including the chief prosecutor as well as the attorney general of, of, of Antigua, that they will put up a case uh, now that India has moved uh, the extradition request with Antigua. But unfortunately, we have not heard a word uh, from the Antiguan government or government officials uh, since, the, since late August. So it's clear that somewhere a delay has kicked in or the chief prosecutor has seen the contents and the material put up before him. Uh, for some uh, uh, reason that we are not aware of, uh, the chief prosecutor has not put up the case before a court of law because ultimately extradition has to be approved by a court of law. It's not a government-to-government -government, uh, instrument. It's a, it's a legal instrument which is bound by uh, a judicial uh, protection. So it has to be uh, activated by a court of law. But uh, it, it's clear that uh, Mayul Choksi is now an Antiguan citizen. He has an Antiguan passport. And uh, he's just going about doing his everyday business like most of us would. Uh, in this picture, it's clear he's, he's buying groceries. Uh, from a supermarket. This picture was taken on the 6th of uh, November. Right. Uh, so, so it's evident that uh, there isn't any great pressure from the Antiguan government to try and put up this case for extradition. You know, you know before I go to Sanjay Jha, one last question also to Zaka Jacob. Uh, Zaka, uh, you spoke to Giselle Isaac, who is the chairman of the United Progressive Party. She sits in the opposition in Antigua. She has also gone on to accuse the Antiguan government of corruption and also protecting Choksi. She believes, and she said this in the past as well, uh, not just in the interview that we taped uh, uh, just now, but she's, she said this in the past as well, that she believes that Mehul Choksi has got a deal with the Antiguan government. Uh, she believes that she has information that uh, the Antiguan government, uh, some people in the Antiguan government have been bought over by Chok Choksi, and therefore they will give him uh, protection. Added to that uh, is also the fact that ultimately uh, it has to be a court of law that has to be convinced, and it depends on the strength of the case, uh, that you put up against Mehul Choksi, uh, whether or not he will get extradited. Uh, but it seems like at the time that he applied for citizenship and at the time that he got his Antiguan passport, there wasn't a criminal case against Mehul mm. Choksi. And that's why uh, the Antiguan government is reluctant uh, to expedite his extradition uh, plea. Right. Zaka, continue to stay with us. Sanjay Jha of the Congress Party is joining us on the phone line. Sanjay Jha, just like Isaac, is the same person who's gone on to tell Zaka that she feels that India must be more aggressive in terms of bringing Choksi back. Your reaction? No, I think you're talking about a situation where the horse is already bolted from the stable and then you want to kind of rein it in. I mean, it's a preposterous uh, assumption to make now uh, for the simple reason that when people apply for foreign citizenships, the domestic country or the domicile you know, nation mm. where the resident was staying earlier uh, has to give all the necessary clearances, whether it's income tax, police, you know, security, everything else put together, mm. which is why this is a monumental scam. If you remember, there were charges against Mehul Choksi dating back to quite a few years. Now, he's got clearances despite having outstanding debts, despite having severe of financial, shall we say, issues of skullduggery, but they were all ignored. I mean, they were ignored by every agency in our country. You know, you know, I'm, not, I'm just going to play CPI. devil's advocate here. As far as the Indian government is concerned, they're saying that the citizenship was given before these scams came into light. No, 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 no. The charges against Mehu Chuksi dated back, uh, dated uh, even earlier than 2015. Uh, I mean, his his clearances came in 2017. So you are you have a very dubious government, a duplicitous government. Mehul Choksi and Nirav Modi and Vijay Malia have all been actually seen off at the airport, and uh, you know, given what I call is a red carpet, you know, send off. You see, the truth of the matter is, when anybody applies for a citizenship abroad, no country likes to admit a drug trafficker or a criminal or a smuggler or somebody who's dealing in human trafficking, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the only way that country can get a clear go-ahead to give citizenship hmm. is when the, when the domiciled country has given a go-ahead, which we have, which we have. Hmm. SEBI, CIA, CBI, 
Uh, you talk of income tax. You talk of any agency in this country, the Ministry of External Affairs. Everybody is involved in this clearance. So, so, now, what is, so you know, Sanjay, what has happened has happened. Now, going forward, what do you think that India must do to step up the efforts in bringing back this fugitive offender back to the country? I think first you need a political intention, right? Now, okay. there are rules and regulations that govern, you know, extradition. You can see the big struggle happening with Vijay Malia or many other people in UK for a long time. Now, one thing which you need to know, Antigua and these smaller countries depend a lot on new citizens coming in and investing money in their country. If they were, they, they by the way, have very stringent regulations to extradite. Because supposing if, if Mehul Choksi were to be extradited, then Antigua may tell itself that am I going to be a very attractive destination for people who want to come in? And I mean, you know, it might make many other people feel that, you know, maybe the extradition laws are such that if I have a problem, uh, this government is going to be very susceptible to sending me back. So there is a lot of complexity here. This is not a very straightforward case. Therefore, there's Antigua, also reluctance therefore, coming in from the Antiguan government, right? Given the fact that he's gone on to make those investments to gain the citizenship of Antigua as well. Right, right. I, but then don't forget, right? He's put money into the country. And that's a con that country is a small country. It relies on tourism. It needs global investors. It uses that money for its own, you know, in improving the tourism infrastructure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have a very vulnerable situation for India. And I think what Mr. Modi's government is doing a lot of this usual, you know, a lot of sound bites and a lot of lot of hyperbole that we are trying to get people back in. The question somebody will ask is, why did you let them out? And That's fine. That what do you think? Uh, is there is the government of the day uh, going to be able to bring these fugitive offenders back into the country or not? Because you just mentioned about a minute ago that there is a lack of political will. Absolutely. I can, I can tell you, I can repeat it and I will say it very slowly but very explicitly on your channel. Narendra Modi's government is hand in glove in the departures of Nira Modi, Vijay Malia, Jatin Mehta, Mehul Choksi, hmm. the works. I don't think they intend to get them back. They will periodically keep telling you that we, you know, we attach these assets here, you know, there and everywhere. But the bottom line is they know they're not coming back. Because if they were to come back, and trust me, if they were to open their, uh, you know, kind of uh, mouths before the investigating agencies in India, and if the investigating agencies in India are not in the kind of state that the CPI is in today, I mean, this government and they will have a lot to explain to the people of this country. Because All there right. are a definite political pit. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Matt Sanjay Jha, for bringing us uh, that perspective to the table. And, of course, Output Editor Zakar Jacob uh, uh, with that story as well. Moving on now, Delhi NCR is engulfed.